Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions. Hello, I'm Laurie Steiner. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, we'll have a healthy debate about your health habits. Then, read all about it. We'll preview the next publication of Boomer and Beyond magazine, a periodical for people like us. We'll give you reasons to smile, even in the midst of winter weather. Plus, there are unsolved murders right here in our midst. We'll focus on a few fascinating cases. And when it comes to estate planning, your second marriage makes for first-rate issues. We vow to help. It's time to get geoing, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for Golden Opportunities. When cutting out skin cancer, the question becomes, how much is enough? And how much is too much? There is a surgical answer to these questions, and it's one that increases survival rates. Dr. Abel Torres is here to explain. Dr. Torres is the Chief of Dermatology at Metro Health. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I, we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about one of the procedures, but there's one way that I guess is kind of the traditional or standard way of, of doing that. So tell us first about that one. Sure. So the traditional way basically is that you cut out the skin cancer, and in doing so, you're sacrificing some normal skin around it. The question is, how much do you sacrifice? If you take too much, you leave too large of a wound. If you don't take enough, you leave tumor behind. The other problem is that it usually takes about a week to two to look at the tissue, and then you get a report back, and so the patient may have to make another trip back for more surgery. Oh, I'm sure they don't want to do that. So what has, what's different then with this other procedure? Well, we have a procedure called Mohs surgery, named after the man who developed it, and now it's actually become an acronym where it's known as microscopically oriented histologic surgery. The idea is that you cut it out, and it's an outpatient setting. You do it under local anesthesia, so you don't have to be in the hospital. And you check it under the microscope the same day. That way, you don't take out more than you have to, and the patient doesn't have to make a return trip to find out whether everything was completely cut out. Sounds better. So why wasn't that done previously? So in the traditional way of cutting out skin cancer, you do what are called vertical sections. And so the tissue is cut out, and cut out like a bread loaf. And so you take the slices, you pull out one of those slices vertically and you look at it. But as you can notice, you're not looking at the entire edge and you're not looking at the entire bottom. Mm -hmm. In the new technique, what happens is it's cut horizontally. So you cut through the entire bottom. So think of it like a salami. And if you cut through it, you see the entire bottom plus mm -hmm. you see the entire edge. So it oh. gives you a much more accurate way of looking at the margins. Oh, that, that sounds like a much better way to do it. So that better way of looking at the tissue leads to better survival rates? Correct. So it's not so much survival rates, it's oh, cure, cure rates. rates? Okay. And so what ends up happening is because you're looking at about at least 80 times more of the tissue or so, the end result is that your cure rates are higher. So the traditional technique, it would be somewhere between 70 to 90 percent, depending on how big a piece of extra skin you sacrifice. With this technique, you can get cure rates anywhere from 98 to 99 percent without sacrificing extra tissue. Okay. Now, when we're talking about extra tissue, how big is that what we're talking it about? It depends really? on the tumor. If the tumor is very large, it could mean uh, something that could be several inches. Oh, if boy. it's uh, tumor is very small, it may just be a few millimeters. And then it also, it's relative. If it's right next to your eye, a few millimeters mm -hmm. means a lot. While if it's on your chest or your arms, a few millimeters doesn't mean that much. Yeah, that's true. So can you use this for all types of skin cancers? So you use it for the majority of skin cancers. Most, the best ones are squamous cells and basal cells because they tend to grow as one piece that are contiguous. For melanomas, it's less often used because that doesn't always grow together and therefore you have to use certain other techniques. But it's, it's used for basically basal cells and squamous cells. Okay, it sounds like it's a great technique. It, it's, a, it's a very good technique. It took a while to develop simply because they had to be able to freeze the tissue hard enough to be able to look at the tissue and stain it. And now that we have better stains, we have better freezing, and now we have even what we call immune stains so that you can use it for special types of tumors, there's a lot more versatility to it. The other part was just learning, people learning and being trained in it. And now that a lot of people have been trained about it, pretty much every major academic medical center or hospitals has somebody who can do this type of technique. It's great. When it comes to removing skin cancer, along with healthy tissue, you, you don't want to take too much and you don't want to take too little. With most surgery, the amount you can take will be just right. 
My thanks to Dr. Torres for sharing this important information about a type of surgery that's a cut above. To learn more, call Metro Health at 216-778-7800 or visit their website, www.metrohealth.org. Next, plenty of pages to peruse. But first, in a few days, we'll give a groundhog the meteorological mandate to perfectly predict the length of our winter weather. But just how often is Puxatani felt correct about our climate? We'll peek at his percentages when we return. Hilltop Village Apartments is retirement living at its best. Residents enjoy a wide variety of activities and living services with all large first floor apartments, private screened in patios with beautiful park views, daily dining room meals, free laundry facilities, 24 hour staff and so much more. Enjoy safe, comfortable independence at a very affordable price. Call today for a tour and learn how you can get your first month's rent free. Hilltop Village Apartments, retirement living at its best. Whether he sees his shadow or not, the groundhog in the spotlight, Puxatani Phil, doesn't have a high rate of being right. His predictions are only accurate about 39% of the time, which means his odds are pretty awful. This periodical is packed with amazing articles. So wait, no waste no more time. We're going straight to the source for a preview of the latest publication of Northeast Ohio Boomer and Beyond, a magazine geared to, well, boomers and beyond, right in our area. Joining us are publisher Brad Mitchell and editor Marie Illiam. So welcome to the show. Hi, Thank thanks. You. So we have to talk about the cover this month of the second sure. issue. So I think we have gonna have, well, a picture, well, I can do the picture here. Very <laughs> here good. Here we go. So, yeah, well, as you see, who is that? That's Tom Licks. He's a local legend. Uh, and our theme, as you see, for this winter issue is beginning again. And uh, Marie did a wonderful interview with Tom, um, who's uh, the founder of Cleveland Whiskey. Yeah, he's really interesting, a great business person. And he's a, a transplant, actually, to Cleveland. A family situation brought him here. And he used his uh, business uh, savviness and expertise to uh, find room in a very specialized market to a great deal of success. Well, that's, and in Cleveland, that's fantastic. Yeah, it is. I do want to read about him, but I know that there's fantastic articles in here. Okay, well, here's one. It talks about online dating for the senior <laughs> set. So what's that all about? Right, well, I don't know if, if this has happened with a lot of your friends, but mine, you know, several, are, some are venturing back into the dating market, whether from uh, circumstance, divorce, or just desire to start again. And so online dating is where it's at. So uh, we talked to experts in the field and they gave us some great tips, great tips for people 50 and older, how to get, stick your toe back into the dating <laughs> pool. Yeah. Right, so they rec uh, they're recommending sites like, uh, such as OkCupid okay and Coffee Meets Bagel, those uh, sorts of places. And also where to meet people after you make that initial connection online. Okay. So we've got something for the singles, and oh, another article here. This talks about families. So right. families aren't forgotten in this. Right, no, no, no. And this, our, our readers have a lot of intergeneration living experiences coming up, whether it's uh, college students uh, moving back home to get started on a career, older family members who uh, are downsizing or maybe need a little more uh, looking after, whatever. So. This article offers practical tips on how to make all the generations work together. And we like to take trips with our loved ones, and it looks like, oh, so here's one that talks about a getaway spot. Well, that's right. I mean, it's winter, and it's time to get out and enjoy the fresh air. And sometimes you want to get away from the city a little bit. And, and we highlight a place called Peak and Peak, which is you know, less than two hours from most of greater Cleveland. You know, they went through a wonderful renovation over the last few years. And not only is there wonderful skiing, and uh, in fact, there's Maria on the s snowboard right there. Uh, <laughs> oh, but, I didn't know you were so yeah. talented. Ooh, 
Right. <laughs> but there's something for everyone beyond skiing and really for all ages, whether it's the high ropes course or the wonderful spa or amazing golf and some great events that happen all year round at Peak and Peak. So it's a, a special place that uh, we visited and we encourage everyone to get out and take a ride out there. Well, I, I know this is your copy, but I really want it, and I'm sure our viewers do too, so where can we get it? Well, Boomer and Beyond is available at over 550 outlets throughout greater Northeast Ohio, Cleveland and Akron, everywhere from libraries to senior centers to fitness facilities, salons, um, many places. And, and if you think that your facility should ha have copies, we'll gladly start a bulk distribution there as well but so the winter issue is out it just hit the streets and we encourage everyone to pick it up and uh, get back to us with their feedback all right we're working on the, the spring issue and uh, coming up here and it's all about rejuvenating and getting ready for the spring so we'd love to hear some feedback excellent so and you can't beat the price it's free and the <laughs> articles and information priceless so pick up your copy of Boomer and Beyond now, and to learn more, use the information that's coming up next. My thanks to Brad and Marie for joining us today. Thanks. Thank you. For more information, call Northeast Ohio Boomer and Beyond at 330-822-4011. Email them at info at northeastohioboomer.com or like them on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash neohioboomer. Next, turn that frown upside down. Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. Mardi Gras encourages us to eat up. Need help? Then plant your plate at the Western Reserve School of Cooking at CCLK Friday, February 5th for a night of noshing. Hush puppies, jambalaya, gumbo, beignets. You'll indulge as if you were in New Orleans. The recipe for this repast? Just register by calling 330-650-1665 or logging on to www.wrsoc.com. Not everything needs to be a big deal. There's something to be said for simple, as long as the results are remarkable. Dennis Steve Marsh is here to share oral alternatives that don't take a lot of time but deliver terrific smiles. Welcome back to the show. Thanks, Lori, and we'll try and make everything remarkable today. All right, so quick and easy, really. Yeah, so so many people, you know, we, we've seen on this show, I've shown some really involved cases and people who've wanted full mouth makeovers, but a lot of people come in and they just want something done simply but to make their smile look good. You know, your previous guest talked about boomers going out and maybe dating because of a situation, divorce, maybe never married, uh, maybe a loss of a loved one, and they're getting ready. And they don't want to get a lot done, but then they look in their, their mirror every day and they see their smile, they understand that they need to do something. A so, little something maybe. A little so something. So what are we talking about? So I thought we'd start with pictures, because that's the best way to show this. And I thought we'd start with just something simple like reshaping. Okay. Uh, this is interesting because it's a patient about our age. She's an attorney. And she noticed as she's gotten older, the teeth have shifted a lot. And because the lower teeth come up against the uppers, they start to chip a, a bit. So I said, you know what? This is so easy. Give me about a half hour. We can reshape. And that's all we did, Lori, reshaping. And it made it look, she said, it's like when I got my braces off 30 years ago. <laughs> so that's a very easy one. Okay. Is Another this? patient, and this is a young man, mm -hmm. um, 20, about 22 years old, and he had gotten his braces off not too long before we had done this, but you can see that his laterals, not the centrals, the ones in the middle, but the next ones are called laterals, mm -hmm. and those teeth are oftentimes shorter and sometimes much more narrow than they should be. In fact, the same thing happened with my own daughter. So we whitened his teeth, we then did hand bonding, we did some reshaping of the teeth and literally in about an hour and a half did all that work. Also, if you look at those laterals, again, the side teeth, they look short also at the gum level. So we used a diode laser right in the office, no anesthetic, we put some topical and we we're able to give him this great smile and now he's ready to go back to college. That's amazing. So it didn't just happen with him, it happened with his brother. Oh. And again, very simply, we did reshaping on the bottom and on the laterals, there we are again, we had actually used some bonding material. Again, this is not porcelain that takes time in a lab and that sort of thing, something we can do right in our office. So again, whitening, reshaping, 
some bonding, some diode lasering, if you will, mm -hmm. to give them that beautiful smile and uh, really handsome. So, and then you talk about porcelain veneers, right? Yeah, and so we talk a lot about veneers on this show. Again, a porcelain veneer is a very thin porcelain material. It goes over the front of the tooth and the edge. It's best used when a tooth is discolored, misshapen, not really to uh, restore a tooth that's had a lot of breakdown. It's very conservative. They can be made very thin. And so we thought we'd look at some pictures with that, again, with these porcelain veneers. And I'm looking. I don't see the pictures. There's oh, one. There we go. So your, your, your um, previous guest talked about people dating. A recently divorced man came in. We did a combination of veneers and crowns. We did reshaping of the bottom. And he was absolutely stunned, and he said he had hesitated to date because of his smile. He thought it was somehow offensive. So we did that. And this last patient is a patient who, again, is young. She's dating. She said, I want my teeth to look good. She didn't have time or the finances for braces. So we did reshaping of the lower teeth. We put a couple of veneers on those laterals that we spoke of earlier, reshaped them a little whitening, though it doesn't show in this picture and made a, a dramatic difference in just two appointments. So Lori, whether it's in the office in an hour, an hour and a half, or sometimes over a week or two, we can really make stunning results and uh, not so involved. Excellent. As you can see, if you want big changes in just a little time, there are options available to transform your teeth into a beautiful smile. For help, give Steve a call. His number's next. See what Dr. Stephen Marsh can do for your smile by calling 440 461-1003 or visit www.clevelandsmiles.com Next, Northeast Ohio Murder Mysteries It's time to get up and go an exercise segment on Golden Opportunities Hey everybody, it's Mike Carbon from Breakout Fitness and we're here today to show you how to do a donkey kick This is an excellent exercise It's not only going to work and strengthen that lower back area but also it's going to build the glutes, you ready? I need this Let's do it, alright We're going to start on all fours here in the studio We have our exercise mat You at home, go ahead and grab a spot on the floor We want our hands to be shoulder width apart Our knees should be about the same What we're looking for here is we're going to bring our knees straight in and then we're going to try to keep a 90 degree bend as we bring it straight up and out Perfect, okay? So we're going to bring it in and then up and out We want 12 to 15 repetitions Let's go ahead, we can switch and try the other side. In and out, all right, how you feeling, Lori? Really good. Looks good, all right, Lori's doing a slightly easier version of this. I need a slightly easier version <laughs> there of this. There you go. Those beginners at home, this is a way that you can build that muscle and still strengthen the same area, okay? 12 to 15, two to three times a week, and now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities, 6105 Parkland Boulevard, Suite 140, Mayfield Heights, Ohio, 44124. Who doesn't love a good mystery? And it turns out you don't have to look far to find one because right here in our area, there's plenty of true crime where no one has done any time at all. Arthur, author Jane Terzillo has uncovered many of these cold cases in her latest book, Unsolved Murders and Disappearances in Northeast Ohio. So welcome to the show again. Well, I'm happy to be here. Before we talk about some of the tales, is it really fun to write about murder? Well, it's very interesting. And, and uh, um, I was a police reporter back uh, in the 70s and 80s in a, uh, for a weekly newspaper, and I did write about a couple of uh, high-profile murders. So uh, uh, it, it is, it's, it's fascinating. But the thing is about cold cases is that family and friends are left behind, and they're left with, uh, uh, you know, with no closure. So uh, by sharing these stories, at least those who were lost can be remembered. Right, right, right. So two of those people we're going to talk about first today is Louise Wolf and Mabel Foote. So tell me a little bit about that. Yes. Uh, well, Louise uh, Wolf was the principal of a school in Parma, uh, and Mabel Foote was one of the teachers. So on February the 17th, uh, 1921, around 8.30 in the morning, three kids were on their way to school. Two of them were teenagers. One was a six-year-old, and they happened upon these two women's battered bodies. Um, and they were, they were brutally, brutally beaten and their, uh, uh, their pocketbooks were strewn mm. around. 
So this is a picture here of? Uh, this is uh, Mabel. After she was killed. Yes. Oh my goodness. Uh, these pictures, I'd like to say these pictures came from uh, uh, the Cleveland um, uh, Library, Cleveland okay. Public Library, and, and I, I really appreciated their, their help. Those are fence posts, right, that they think was... Okay. Did the police really have any leads? I mean, with well, fence posts and dead bodies, that was about it? Okay. Um, they found these fence posts that they thought were the, uh, were the murder weapons, and they also found tracks in the mud uh, that showed possibly where the murderer had, uh, had made his way away. Um, but they didn't seem to, um, they didn't seem to know uh, or, or be able to tell any motives because they were not sexually assaulted and they still had their valuables with them. Hmm. Uh, it was believed that there was one uh, murderer and that he knew the area well and that he knew the two school teachers' uh, uh, habits. Okay. So in spite of, uh, uh, in, in spite of talking to everybody that, that they could that seemed the least bit suspicious, offering a reward, and even getting two different confessions that were um, turned out to be false, the case was never solved. Never solved. That's sad for those poor people left behind. Well, you right. Know? And right. you've got lots more of these kind of cold case mysteries in your book itself. So. I wish we had time to talk about them all. They're going to have to buy the book. Well, good idea. <laughs> good so, idea. This story and other really tantalizing true tales of murder and mystery revealed unsettling and yet intriguing insights into unsolved cases. To see if you can determine who done it, read Jane Trezello's book, Unsolved Murders and Disappearances in Northeast Ohio. My thanks to Jane for joining me here today. Thank you so much. To buy the book and to find out more, visit Jane Terzillo's website, www.janeterzillo.com. Next, your wife or your kids. Here at Metro Health, you know you matter when it matters most. Here, we are the city's best at preparing for the world's worst. Here, we are the only verified burn center in Ohio for adults and children. Here, you'll find exceptional clinicians with extraordinary hearts. So the work we do here at Metro Health makes an impact here, out here, and right here. Metro Health, we're here for you, for all of you. Did you miss a phone number or website? Then here's your second chance because we're gonna list all of that information again. And then we'll be back to help you establish estate planning after remarriage. According to a study by the Pew Research Center, remarriages are on the rise. Four out of every ten marriages are now remarriages. Half of previously married seniors have remarried. What, what special issues do remarried couples need to think about when they get married again? Here to discuss this complicated issue is my law partner, Michael Solomon. Hello, Lori. Well, let's say a couple each has some children from her first marriage, and now they're going to get married. What are the issues they really should think about? Well, putting aside just the general family dynamics, I mean, it, one of the things you need to think about is all the economic issues that happen on remarriage. You have you know, income tax issues, uh, prenuptial agreements you might need to, uh, for that family, uh, the pension plan, 401k, social security benefits, those are all impacted. You, you know, cost sharing, how are you going to share the costs? Uh, even, you know, and then estate planning documents. What do you do about that? Now, uh, you know, this would take a whole program, and you're not going to give me the whole program, so I'm going to focus just on estate planning documents. Okay, so how would a, mar a second marriage or third marriage impact your estate planning documents? Well, let me just use an example. So I had a uh, client's uh, second marriage. They're in their 50s. They have children, each from their first marriage. Second marriages sometimes last longer than the first, so the husband survived another 20 years after that second marriage, 
passed away and he put in his will, I give everything to my wife. And there was an understanding that on her death, his assets would go back to his children. But mm -hmm. she lived a long time. She commingled all the assets. Mm -hmm. Her will said on her death, everything goes to her children. And the husband's children, you know, they said, well, dad didn't mean this. And dad didn't mean this. But he didn't have the right documents. Okay. So what should dad have done? Well, what he should have done is, is what's commonly called a marital trust. And what that means is it's a trust. So on the dad's death, husband's death, the money's held in trust. It's, it's irrevocable for the benefit of the surviving spouse. But then on her death, it has to go back to his children, so it's protected. So who makes sure that the terms of the trust are actually followed? Well, that's the thing. The, the, a trust is a private document. The government doesn't care about the trust. As long as you pay your income taxes, they're happy. <laughs> and, and no one's monitoring the trust except the trustee of the trust, let's say maybe the surviving spouse, and the ultimate beneficiaries of the trust. That's it. So it's a private document. So you know, some of our clients are worried about what happens if the surviving spouse Just doesn't follow the terms right. of the trust. If you're worried about that, then you need to think about maybe having an independent trustee, a bank or a trust company, or if you don't want that, maybe a third party, a family member to be the trustee to watch over the terms of the trust. Now, there's no one size fits all. I mean, I'm not saying you need this type of trustee for every trust. Mm -hmm. You need to sit down your situation and analyze and see what, what, what's right for you. And that's with all the terms of the trust, not one size for everybody. Okay. More and more older Americans face this issue. There are a tremendous number of economic issues that need to be addressed before you tie the knot again. If you want more information, go to our website at ssnplaw.com and look for the article titled, Planning for Second Marriages. Or call Mike for more information at the number coming up next. Call Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888 236-5173 for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization. Or log on to www.ssnplaw.com. Thanks for joining us. On next week's show, Mistakes With Your Money Can Cost You. We'll offer options to avoid failure with your finances. We'll help you work on your wellness. Plus, we'll hear stories of George Steinbrenner's winning stay right here in our hometown. But until then, please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. If you'd like to join our kitchen conversation, visit our website, www.goldenopportunities.tv. Like us on Facebook. Call us at 440-742-GO-TV or email us at kitchen at goldenopportunities.tv. We'd love to hear from you. Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions.